Hello and welcome to another episode of Romance of the Three Games. We're carrying on from where we left off with Wu's Musu mode. It says here that Sun Jian has just managed to survive his uh, ambush by Liu Biao and defeat Liu Biao in fact. Uh, a little bit deviant from history because Sun Jian actually died in that last battle we saw, which the game was determined to recreate <laughs> by having me constantly be defeated by him dying. Uh, but indeed we've pushed on and he has somehow survived. However, I believe in the next battle, uh, he is not going to make an appearance, so the game's going to kind of acknowledge that he wasn't around anymore. Instead, his son, Sun Se, is going to take over all of the Sun family's power and uh, military strength. However, they have some problems because the area that Sun Jian had authority in is now uh, covered in various rebel forces being stirred up uh, either by each other or by some of the uh, Warlords vying for power who are constantly trying to undermine each other by having minor barons rebel. Anyway, the objective here is to defeat Liu Yong. I don't know who he is historically, I hadn't heard of him. Uh, I'll tell you about him in a minute though. Uh, we have a, a couple of uh, classic Wu officers. Zhou Yu, who I'm playing as, I believe is the only one who is uh, not historical at this stage. Uh, Zhou Yu does join the Wu Empire but a little bit later. So let's go in. It's the campaign for Wu territory. This level broadly represents Sun Se's campaign uh, to capture all of the territory uh, in southeast China, which would become the Wu Empire. So we're going to take back our own castle with our own hands. I hope our own hands are still in there. So I'm going to go over here and join Lu Meng, fighting with these enemy troops. And we're going to see that very early on, Tai Chi Chi is going to put a little trick. He destroys the Shen Di Bridge, which for me is very useful because it means the flank of our army is now protected from the enemy, which means I can take the vanguard and be fairly safe. <laughs> the legendary Yu Mi, who we've been seeing in Empire's mode, uh, makes an appearance here in Musu mode. He doesn't put up much of a show though, he runs away just as I approach, and the enemy retreat into their fortress. Zhang Ying, who's in command of the fortress, seems to think there's no possible way we could take it. However, not long later we see this happen. It seems that Jian Queen has managed to get inside the enemy fortress somehow. It opens the gates from the inside, and so I respond by rushing in uh, to start helping him out on the inside. Zhang Ying just uh, makes a run for it. So there's not going to be much contest uh, for taking this fortress. However, I am going to have to do battle with the legendary Yumi. So let's see how good he is in Musu mode uh, after his legendary performance in Empire's mode in the last few stages. <laughs> well, so far he's not doing too well. Pretty much just whomping on him. <laughs> My archers, uh, they're not being particularly helpful doing their old point-blank range fire, uh, well, not firing, rather. Uh, they like to just aim at the enemies right in their face, but not actually fire the arrow. Very useful of them. So we've captured this little fortress on the map, and now we need to move on. And as I did, I was offered a duel by Tai Chi Chi, uh, so I decided to take it. Tai Chi Chi, historically, was kind of just a rogue general. He wasn't really fighting for anyone in particular. But it was historical that Sensei's forces fought and defeated him. So the duel begins, and uh, I immediately <laughs> discover that Tai Chi Chi's health doesn't really go down at all when I hit him, which means we're going to have to uh, be fairly careful. I think this is another one of the duels, like the one with Lu Bu, Lu Lao Gate, where you're not supposed to really win. It's a little bit easier, but still, you can see uh, he managed to take off a ton of my health with just a couple of hits, whereas like the 12 or so hits I did to him. Um, only got him down to about the same amount, so I'm at a slight disadvantage. <laughs> Plus he's having a good time blocking on my hits, and then he gets a combo on me. I almost die. Luckily my Musu bar fills up and I use my true Musu. But look at how much damage it's doing. Nothing. The true Musu has almost no effect. So I knew I was screwed, so I decided to waste the last couple of seconds of the duel by just running away. Hopefully I'll still get the morale increase uh, for fighting to a draw, because Tai Chi Chi was so powerful. We'll see uh, what happens now. Yes, I did get the increase, very good. But now I still have to deal with Tai Chi Chi out on the battlefield, plus all his bodyguards. Thankfully I have basically all of the Wu army fighting with me, plus my bodyguard squad acting as a distraction. So it's uh, not exactly the one-on-one -on -one scenario of the duel, and I'm going to use a little bit of the chaos in the fighting to uh, defeat all of his bodyguards one by one, and then slowly take him down. 
We skip forward to a little bit later now. <laughs> Still barely done any damage to him, but you can see a lot of the uh, enemies that are around have been cleared out. <laughs> Finding it very hard to do damage to him, unfortunately. Oh, that was a good dodge. <laughs> My bodyguards are kind of uh, doing a good job there, distracting the enemy, because when their arrows hit an enemy uh, trooper officer, that trooper officer will then turn their attention to their bodyguards and forget that I'm there, because the AI is programmed to primarily attack the person who attacked them last, rather than doing any sort of target prioritization, uh, which I believe it did have in Dynasty Warriors 3, that was actually something they took out. Oh god, Taichi Chi just absolutely devastated me there, I almost died. Oh god, I got very close, but luckily... It at the same time, Liu Yong starts berating Tai Chi Chi. <laughs> Apparently, Tai Chi Chi is useless and he gets so offended by Liu Yong's insults that he pulls back. So that's pretty convenient. I just barely avoided death and Tai Chi Chi withdrew. So I guess I achieved my objectives there in a slightly roundabout way. However, now the enemy uh, fortress gate that I was fighting outside have opened up and a ton of enemy reinforcements are pouring out. You can see officers are slowly surrounding me. So I'm in a little bit of trouble. So since they claims there's no end to the enemy reinforcements, um, I beg to differ, so I decided to fight them anyway. We also discovered that there's some sort of gong being used to signal a supply depot. I think this little part of the stage is a reference to something Sensei did uh, when he was fighting against an enemy officer called Liu Yao, uh, who I think Liu Yao is who Liu Yong is supposed to refer to in the Romance of the Three Kingdoms, the historical officer Liu Yao has a lot of the same characteristics in that he uh, he rebelled and started fighting over the Wu territory which is where we are now controlled by I think it was Sun Tse's uncle and Sun Tse comes along takes command of the Sun family troops away from his uncle and then proceeds to very easily conquer the area he also has some backup troops provided by Yuan Shu Yuan Shu thought that uh, Sun Tse would uh, basically just lose. They only gave him a couple of backup troops. Then everyone was very surprised when he used this tiny army he'd been given to conquer a massive amount of territory. And this is how he earned the nickname, the Little Conqueror. So I defeated the enemy officers that came as reinforcements. So it turns out there really wasn't an end to them. I'm starting to go to the supply depot, but very stupidly attacked the wrong way. It turns out you were supposed to attack the west gate rather than the north gate. And at the north gate you get ambushed. Uh, so I had to fight some of these ambush troops and fight my way out back to the west gate. Now I was in a little bit of trouble because I had to defeat uh, these officers, this officer sorry, and fight my way into the supply depot faster than Sun Se was dying because <laughs> the ambush troops I triggered also attacked Sun Se and had higher morale, which meant if I didn't get inside the depot soon and defeat Fan Neng, who is the commander of the ambush troops, I would actually be in serious risk of losing this stage. <laughs> Luckily, when I ring the gong, the gates open, I can rush in to where Fan Neng is. He's barely defended at all. I guess he used all his troops on that ambush. And now, I can proceed to just take him out. So as I was saying, I guess this Liu Yao chap is who Liu Yong is supposed to be, just to finish off that point. And indeed, Sun Tse did use a plan based around attacking a supply depot. Um, in order to defeat him. However, the advice was not given by Zhou Yu, as it was here in the stage. It was given by Sun, uh, Sun Tse's aunt, I believe, one of the uh, Sun family dowagers. I think it was Sun Jian's uh, sister. I don't know her name. It might have been one of the many women who was just called Lady Wu in the Sun family. So we move on. I move back to the central castle and found one of Liu Yong's subordinate officers. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to show you that clip because there was a nice musical uh, tone to, to my attacks there. They all had a little bit of a, a tone to them. And I started moving on towards the enemy castle. I managed to find Tai Chi Chi again. And now it's time for the rematch. Uh, rematch, sorry. He only has a couple of troops guarding him, so I can take them down pretty easily. I'm still going to have to be careful because Tai Chi Chi is still all powered up and could uh, kill me fairly easily if he wanted to and managed to get a good combo on me. <laughs> Again, managed to dodge his little poke with his giant, uh, well, I don't know what they are. They kind of look like giant pieces of rock or something, those weapons that he has. I don't know what they're supposed to be, but he's down. Come with me, Taiji Chi. Let us create a new world together.
A new world, you say. A whole new world. I will need some time to think. And so Zhou Yu attempts to persuade Tai Chi Chi to join our side, uh, in a nod to the historical um, efforts of Sun Se to make him join our side, and Tai Chi Chi just sort of disappears off. So I fight my way inside the castle, he saw Zhang Ying there, who had zero morale, and went down in about 5 seconds, he was uh, an easy opponent. So now the castle is just full of uh, enemy Peon soldiers. Meanwhile, my, the entire Wu army is coming from the east, and uh, <laughs> as if that wasn't enough, we're about to get a little bit of a reinforcement. From Tai Chi Chi, here's the man himself showing up. I am here, Lord Sunsei. I pledge my life to creating a new world. Well, that's kind of you. So Tai Chi Chi's unit appears in the bottom corner. So now we have like four armies coming in from the east side, uh, with only a low morale enemy command left. The result is now inevitable. I just have to move forward and fight on against Liu Yong. <laughs> I'm trying to do as many combos as I can to get my uh, little bits of weapon experience which you see coming up on the left, which uh, can actually add up to be quite sizable amounts if you do enough combos. Liu Yong says it wasn't meant to be, and just runs away. There we go, another victory for the Soon family, much easier than last week's stage. I guess uh, Zhou Yu is a little bit powered up after I trained him up for the last week's stage, so it's kind of easy this time. Anyway, here's the battle replay. We saw from the beginning we actually had fairly similar morale to the enemy, so things weren't always uh, going to go wrong from the start like they were in the previous battle. The enemy reinforcements showed up and this was only the point where we could possibly lose, but defeating those two enemy reinforcement officers and then subsequently coming down and defeating Fan Neng basically turned the tide and we were still uh, not really at risk of being defeated because all of our own officers were off uh, fighting with zero morale enemy troops. And there we go, I rushed down, kill Tai Chi Chi, kill Chang Ying, <laughs> Tai Chi Chi reappears on our side, and finally the stage ends with all of our officers having skyrocketing morale. Very easy, let's see what we get. A slight upgrade to the speed scroll, and some useless dragon amulets which I already have. So not particularly interesting on the items there actually. And a single rank up. My weapon ranks up to the next level, so I've unlocked a new attack for Zhou Yu, so I'm probably going to use him again on the next stage, so we'll see how that goes. <coughs> My bodyguards rank up to level 10, their defense stat is now maxed out, which means I can stop using the bows for one thing, uh, because the only purpose of using the bows is to train up your defense, and Tai Chi Chi is unlocked as a playable character. Handy. <coughs> So now we're moving on to Extreme Mode, we're on Mission 6. Let's see what sort of levels are available this time. I saw here that one of them was in the Kingdom that I had just conquered, uh, so I decided to go for that, especially since all the exchange rates were equal. So now I'm going to be able to exploit the bonus. Not only do you get a lovely female shopkeeper, but you get slightly cheaper prices in the shop. So I thought I'd exploit these cheap pri uh, prices and buy more things than I normally would, <clears throat> so first decided to buy some archers, didn't really expect them to do much, I just wanted to use them as a distraction to keep enemy troops away from me. Got the manacles to make myself weaker in exchange for points, which I think is worth it. And I decided to buy the attack up items. I don't normally buy stat up items as I've said before because I think it's a waste of money, uh, but since they were cheaper than normal, I decided to do it on this occasion as a special present to myself. I decided to swap the Horned Helm, uh, which I've been using for the Elixir, which I found in the previous stage, which is actually a little bit more useful. The objective is to take out Yue Ying, uh, who is one of the only three enemy officers on the screen. Not so much to do in this stage, then. Two of them, Liu Bei and Lu Shang, start off right in front of me, so the action of this stage is really going to take place in the, uh, the opening couple of minutes. I'm immediately assaulted by enemy troops when the stage starts, and I immediately begin my campaign to kill them all with the same attack over and over again, which is the best way <laughs> to play extreme mode with Lubu. Now this map is actually a piece of the map I played on, um, I think it was in the, yeah, on, in the last stage of extreme mode, 
which means I already kind of had in my mind where all the boxes were. So I was very enthusiastic about going around the stage and opening all the boxes in the search for health. We'll see how that goes. First I have to do a little bit of combat with Lu Shang, who turns out to have been standing right next to me but not really getting involved in those initial bouts. Handily I have these uh, other troops with me who are kind of distracting the enemy a little bit, giving me more leeway to just constantly <laughs> whack these enemies every time they uh, get up off the ground having absolutely no ability to attack me at all. So there we go, that's the first one down. Now I move on, I had to fight Liu Bei. Uh, Liu Bei was guarding a gate which meant I could not bypass him. I had to kill him in order to complete the stage, which is actually a little bit annoying uh, because he was surrounded by archers and these archers are going to keep shooting me throughout this engagement. Plus Liu Bei himself is going to prove to be a very slippery customer. For one thing, he was actually blocking my kill everything attack, which is extremely rude. I thought, oh god, look at that, he just blindsides me off the side of the screen, sends me flying. I was not impressed about that. So I decided to uh, focus on him a little bit more, but he just keeps blocking, and then, oh, he actually gets a hit on me. Use my Musou on him to take revenge, but the final hit of my Musou misses, oh, and then he hits me again, and again! He keeps doing that cheeky jumping attack, which is too fast for me to do anything about. Get hit by an arrow and the jumping attack again. This is not going well. Luckily I have the defense times too, so it's not really taking anything off my health, but it's still pretty annoying. And now we're talking. I start to get a combo on him. And once Lubu starts killing an enemy officer, uh, that enemy officer is completely doomed because you can just keep hitting them and never give them a chance to get up. So I took a couple of bits of revenge on those archers, stole this horse so that I could run off on my campaign to open every box on the stage. First I had to get past Yue Ying, I decided to uh, give her a little passing gift as I went by by uh, killing some of her troops, which I'm sure she would have loved. Yue Ying is one of my favourite characters. I think she's a lot of people's favourite character. <laughs> Take out that little stack of archers. Um, yeah, a lot of people, or at least a lot of people, like her as a character because of her sort of uh, her white knight angel look. I don't know. And uh, also, historically, she's supposed to be this. Um, super intelligent woman. You can see here I uh, found the health. Uh, <laughs> I spent about five minutes in between the two pieces of footage you just saw checking every stage on the map for health. Now once I'd finished checking that area Yui Ying decided to just run at me. I guess she uh, decided she uh, couldn't be without Lu Bu any longer and just had to come over and pay me a little visit. Decided to take out her troops which I believe is a good way of breaking the ice on a first date. They actually kind of resisted dying, these elite guards that she had around her. Um, but I wasn't going to fight her just yet because there were still a, little, a couple of boxes on the map I had to go and get. So this is uh, one minute later, as I dealt with those boxes, we're back on the other side of the map. Yui Ying followed me when I went over to get the boxes. And now it's just me and her left, so we're going to duel to the death. <laughs> she throws her war pike at me, which is pretty annoying, and she does it again. Luckily I managed to dodge it that time. She was being very cheeky, Oh, just about dodge her musu. Oh, got her there. Managed to just catch her. That was pretty close. Oh, and then she hits me into the air, which means you can't block it. Oh, devastating combo, but I backflip away from her final attack. Oh, but the ground pound still gets me. Ah, but now I'm building up momentum. Now, <laughs> the real fighting begin. I'm really getting that weapon experience there. Probably got 100 weapon experience just in that little combo. Very useful. And now, as I said, <laughs> once Lubu starts killing an officer, he never stops. There we go. Just have to get the momentum. The manacles give me the thousand point bonus for having the reduced stats. And we continue on with another victory for Lubu. And I think all my archers survived, or at least some of them survived. I don't really know what happened to them because they stopped following me around, but it didn't tell me that they died. We got a level 3 poison orb, not too interested in that. Level 2 speed scroll, that, that could possibly be useful. And a little bit of experience, which is going to convert into a little bit of money. I want to rank up. Hopefully next time I rank up I'll unlock a new item slot where I can take that speed scroll with me. There we go, got a fair bit of money and the stage is over. We'll find out what happens next time in the Romance of the Three Games. For now we're moving in to Empire's mode to see what Yan Mei is going to be doing. First let's pick our policy. First one was kind of interesting, I'll upgrade the Tortoise Amulet and get some uh, troops. Second one, trade Poison Orb for Wing Boots, not really interested. This third one I quite like the look of. It, um, kind of get the people to respect you and give a thousand troops to all officers. Underway. I'm kind of feeling like I needed some troops to be restored to my army after taking gradual casualties over the last five turns or so. 
so now all of my officers have a fair body of troops with them. Liu Yong, the guy we were fighting <laughs> in the first uh, stage of this episode, asked me to help him out fighting against Sun Jian. So I decide to help him out in a slightly oblique way by attacking Sun Jian's home region of Changsha with my own forces. So although this will save Liu Yong, it won't mean I uh, miss a turn of conquest. In fact, I'm going to get two territories because Sun Jian controls two and this is his capital. Taking the same army as ever, since I don't have any more officers, Maybe this time I'll end the stage with enough money to buy some, but considering that my policy was quite expensive this turn, I don't think I'm going to be able to. Because this was an important battle, I uh, considered taking some items. Ended up going for the Tiger Amulet to give me a little bit of extra attack. So let's see who we've got. Our officers start with uh, OK Morale. As usual, Yu Mi starts with skyrocketed morale, ready to go on his rampage. Uh, we're going to face, face off Sun Shang Shang, Hung Gai, and Han Dang. Han Dang is going to be guarding the enemy main camp, so we don't have to worry too much about him. Whereas uh, Sun Shang Shang and Hung Gai are powerful officers, so we're going to have to worry about them a little bit. Stay so first I moved forward and captured a couple of enemy bases. Uh, here's me capturing the second one, I believe. Now I was worried because Sun Chang Zhang and Hung Gai were fighting with my entire army on the north side of the map. Now here we go, I'm going to look at it <laughs> in the unit info. Over here Sun Chang Zhang and Hung Gai um, are fighting with maximum morale against uh, three of my officers, no four of my officers with maximum morale. Now this is good for me because I can win on pure force of numbers. And we should see in, in a, few a few moments sorry, that indeed, there he goes. Hung Gai falls back. So now I was uh, pretty confident that Sun Shang Shang would die as well because four of my maximum morale officers were fighting just one of theirs. And when it comes down to situations like this, uh, numbers do win out in Dynasty Warriors logic. Still though, I moved on, captured a couple of enemy bases, and the ones I captured uh, put Sun Shang Shang out of the supply line, which meant her morale fell down to zero. As I was fighting her, Sun Shang's army reinforcements appeared, so there's now two more enemy officers to worry about. Uh, wandering around on the map. <laughs> Not too fast for the moment, I decided to keep giving Sun Shang Shang a little bit of punishment for coming too deep into our territory. Now, when you defeat an enemy officer inside your own territory, inside the blue part of the map, they don't just fall back, they leave the battlefield completely, which means they have no chance of respawning, uh, whereas all the enemy, other, en uh, other enemy officers I've been defeating will be respawning. So I move forward, Two enemy officers, I think it's the enemy reinforcement officers in fact, had moved forward and started engaging one of my bases, and that is just not acceptable, so I decided to take them out. Luckily I managed to do it one at a time, however Hung Gai was sneaking up behind me this whole time. I didn't really realise until he was basically standing right next to me, he'll probably appear any second now. Oh there he is, I just saw his weapon on the screen. His enormous weapon, there he is. <laughs> he starts really pounding on me, but luckily I block all his attacks. Xing Darong decides to uh, come and get involved. Oh, and this Lieutenant General, I think he, one of Hung Gai's lieutenants, shows up to fight as well. I oh, know it's one of Yang Cheng's lieutenants. Cheeky man. So I'm fighting all three of these officers, but uh, luckily Yan Mei is totally hardcore and can do some serious damage. I was focusing on Hung Gai uh, because he was the most powerful of all of them. <laughs> Xing Darong blindsides me there with a spear charge. I think from now on in this battle, it very much becomes an issue of you having to constantly fight with enemy officers as they respawn. Because on this map, uh, the supply chain you need to capture in order to get the enemy's main camp requires you to go in a very linear fashion with only one possible route towards that camp, which means the enemy uh, respawns will always uh, walk towards you from the very beginning because they have no choice. This means the battle is basically a constant struggle to defeat enemy officers faster they can respawn. And especially because there's quite a few enemy officers, this is fairly challenging. It said for a moment there that Yumi is struggling and he just fell off his horse. Uh, so I don't know why he was struggling because he was fighting morale zero units. There he is again, he's got his horse back and he's charging in front of me. Uh, Yumi wants glory this time. So far Yumi had actually only captured one base. So he wasn't uh, being a complete badass like he was on the last stage. But there aren't many ca uh, many bases to capture, so I guess he didn't have much uh, opportunity. 
Sun Quan was being useful as ever by spawning an ambush uh, on the enemy's camp. So this was pretty good. Uh, this meant there's going to be some maximum morale troops hanging around inside one of the enemy bases doing some damages. Now I'm fighting with two enemy officers, including Han Dang, the guy who's so far just been sitting at the back. Han Dang has no morale for some reason, uh, so I guess he got a little bit worried about the fact that all his allies had been defeated before he'd even joined the fight. <laughs> he's swatting at me with his sword, but uh, he's not going to survive long. That's the end of him. <laughs> Cheeky Major tries to get a hit on me, take him down. Right, so now we're so close to the enemy camp. Um, victory seems inevitable, however, <laughs> enemy officers just kept appearing. Uh, I was never able to capture this camp. Because you have to defeat every single e uh, enemy in the vicinity of the base in order to capture it. But because enemy officers kept running in and bringing all of their troops, there'd almost always be one troop around uh, to keep it occupied by the Wu forces. Still, I decided to focus on taking out these enemy officers. So Xing Dao Rong's going for round two, that's another death for him. <laughs> All units, fall back. Now, just as soon as I've got rid of him, Hung Gai shows up, so now I have to fight him. Decided to moose my way up this hill, taking out Hung Gai and a score of his troops. Hung Gai uses a special ability which pushes his morale up to maximum. Not so much of a problem because I'm fighting right next to him, his morale effects are going to be uh, not so important. <laughs> I decided to take out all of his troops there just to uh, be a little bit imposing. Some guy starts really uh, beating down on my officers. Yu Mi, in fact, has lost some health, which has got to be a first for Yu Mi. Uh, <laughs> he's pretty much the uh, the beast from the east, but oh god, both me and Yu Mi. That was confusing. Me and Yu Mi uh, both get sent flying by Hun Gai's Musu. Luckily, there's some health lying around from one of the many other enemy officers who I've cut down recently. So I picked that up and continue the fight. Now Hungai is in a little bit of trouble. <laughs> I slam Hungai into Yumi. Uh, Yumi is actually almost dead. Uh, partially my fault for taking his health off by hitting officers into him, but uh, partially Hungai's fault as well. Luckily I, I knew that Hung uh, Yumi sorry, would never really die because he is an invincible beast. And uh, I think he managed to somehow get some health back. Uh, enemy officers sometimes, they can if they stand still for long enough, uh, they get random power-ups, such as health being restored or their their stats going up. I believe it's um, it's something the AI can actively choose for the officers to do, and what makes what makes the AI decide to do it, uh, I have no idea. It's kind of random. I think um, if an officer gets low on health, they get uh, a little bit more cautious and start trying to um, build up these power-ups, which they get by just standing around. Anyway, now I had to get into the enemy main camp. Sun Jian, the ruler, shows up and he goes down uh, pretty damn easy. And there we go, the stage is won. So it was a little bit hairy when I thought that um, right at the beginning that Hun Gai and Sun Shang Shang would fight through my forces in the northwest. But luckily, so many of my guys piled in that from that moment onwards, victory was assured. So that's, um, yeah, that's two more territories uh, for Yan Mei. Some quite heavy casualties, basically because. I'd actually bothered deploying units that had troops in them. I had more troops to be killed, and thus took higher casualties. I took prisoner the entire uh, Sun Shan uh, army force, but I don't think I'm going to have any money to take them, unfortunately. Yan Mei's empire now takes up a little bit more than half of China, so those other warlords must be getting pretty uh, worried about Yan Mei's ambition. Indeed, I only have 1,200 gold, which isn't enough to hire even the lowliest of the Wu army officers. <laughs> Liu Yong, who I've been helping out, still loses the territory to Yuan Shu. You can see I'm still allied to him for one more turn. Uh, will I betray him? Well, you'll have to wait and find out. Some of my officers level up, including the legendary Yu Mi and Yan Mei. So Yan Mei is now even more powerful, as if she wasn't powerful enough. And we'll find out just how powerful she is next time on Empire's Mode. For now, that is all for this episode of Romance of the Three Games. I hope you enjoyed seeing this more action from Dynasty Warriors, and there'll be more to come in the near future. So I wish you a very nice week, and I will see you next time on Romance of the Three Games.